Gallup in high school was a good, really good student, pretty good football player, was heavily recruited, decided to go to Penn State. Because I was so well recruited, I thought I was going to go to Penn State and have an immediate impact, right? I was going to be one of those fresh freshman phenoms. I was going to shake up the world. Didn't quite happen that way. <laughs> um, because I realized that just as I came in, there were 24 other guys who were freshman phenoms. And we encountered another 75 guys who were sophomore, junior, senior, and fifth year phenoms. In other words, there was so much talent there. My freshman year preseason camp was easily the most difficult, the most trying, the most painful athletic experience I've ever had. It was brutal, physically and emotionally, right? Be because now you're no longer a big fish in a little pond. You, even if you're a big fish, it's, it's a big pond, right? And you've got to contend and deal with all this other stuff. And, and don't laugh, but I, I went in at 170 pounds. Not quite there right now. Um, but there were some guys who were a whole lot bigger, a whole lot stronger, a whole lot faster. And trying to tackle some of those guys was painful. I was a defensive back, um, free safety. And it was, it, was, it, it was tough. In fact, we had a fullback. His name was Sam Gash. How cool of a name is that for a fullback? Sam Gash. Let me describe Sam to you. Sam was about 6'2", 6'3", 240 pounds. And to kind of give, give you a picture, he was one big black muscle. How about that? <laughs> and I had to tackle that big guy in the open field by myself. It hurt. And if I didn't do it right the first time, we had to do it over and over. Let me put this in perspective. Um, you know what ace bandages are? I used a couple of those. Do you guys know what ice and stem is? They put bags of ice or put you in an ice bath, and then when you get out, they take these electrodes, these, this electric, electronic stimulation to try to get your muscles to work properly again. Maybe, you'll, maybe this will be relevant. Maybe you'll understand this. Before practice, just to get through practice, I was taking two 800 milligram Motrin. That helped kind of put, put things, that was, that was before practice. I was looking for change around campus to find a payphone to call mom and dad like, listen, y'all need to come get me. <laughs> this, 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 I mean, Sam Gash is putting a hurting on me. I still, to this day, I still have physical and emotional scars from that, op yeah, from that open, PTSD, from, from that open field tackle drill. You get the picture? This big, tough, highly recruited, highly touted, big time high school football player is crying, trying to find a way to come home. I'm hurting. I'm ready to quit. Football is no more fun. I, I hate this game. I, I survived camp. I survived. At the end of camp, our coach, Coach Paterno, comes in the room, squad room, and he says, gentlemen, this was a tough camp. Now, if you haven't figured out by now, I'm a pretty sarcastic guy. So in my head, I'm saying, tough for who? You walking around with a whistle, like, I didn't say it, but I, I thought it. I'm not stupid. I'm like, tough. He says, yeah, and we made it tough on purpose. Now, I'm, you call that coaching? You take 130 elite athletes and you try to kill us and you call that coaching? Again, as if he heard me, he said, and I did it on purpose for this particular reason. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen. He said, I needed to find your breaking point. What? I intentionally manufactured discomfort, adversity, because I needed to find your breaking point. Now, why in the world would you do that? Here's why. Because I needed to find out who I could trust, who I could trust in the fourth quarter of a tough football game. It's not the biggest. It's not the fastest, it's not the strongest. It's not the most highly recruited, it's not the guy coming in with the most accolades. It's the person who can handle, who, who has embraced the difficulty of this game. Man, that changed my life. Because I wasn't the biggest, I wasn't the fastest, I wasn't the strongest. But I could manage this. 
I found out that day that if you want to contribute to the success of this team, it's your mental toughness. It's not your pedigree. It's not, it's not your years of experience. It's, are you tough enough to handle the rigors of this game? Changed my life. Changed the way I played. Changed my life. Because I knew I could handle adversity. I knew I could manage, I could control how tough I was. And there's three things I learned about adversity that day I want to share with you right now. Number one, adversity is inevitable. I don't care who you are. I don't care race, gender, socioeconomic level, geography, I don't care. Adversity is inevitable. It's going to happen. So don't try to run away, find some other place, look for greener grass, because there will be some adversity there. And when it's not there naturally, good leadership will manufacture it to make the cream rise to the top. So adversity is inevitable. Second thing I learned, adversity reveals a person's true colors. <laughs> you want to find out what somebody's really like? Observe them during times of adversity. See, I was a recruiter for 15 years. And when I interviewed candidates, they were at their absolute best. It was only downhill from there. <laughs> when you're on an interview, you bring in your A game. What, everything else, your work is, is less than that because you're, pre you're prepared. You, you, you bring it, you got your best suit on. You come to work raggedy for the rest once you get hired. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Everyone is wonderful when everything is wonderful. Let me repeat that. Everyone is wonderful when everything is wonderful. I find out who you really are. Your true colors come out when things get tough. And here's the third thing, and I'm almost done. Adversity is opportunity in disguise. Man, adversity is opportunity in disguise. What makes a situation adverse? There's pain and discomfort, right? Well, that's that's what when, when, when we say, "Oh man, I'm facing some adversity." What are you What are you experiencing? Pain and discomfort, right? What do most people do when they experience pain and discomfort? They try to find ways to hide or mask the pain, or quit. Or quit. I was going to say it this way, or retreat to a place of comfort. I don't like that. This hurts. So they retreat to a place of comfort. If I didn't shake so many hands today, I was going to suck my thumb like a little baby. But, but you, you, you get, you get, I don't know where your hands been. <laughs> But you get the picture, right? Yep. I, this is not comfortable. I'm not happy here. So they retreat mm -hmm. to a place of comfort. Winners are different. Winners are different. They don't quit. They don't hide. They don't run away. It's not that they like pain or discomfort. Winners understand that this situation that everyone else is retreating from is actually an opportunity in disguise. This is my opportunity to get bigger, faster, or stronger. This is my opportunity to get wiser, more creative, more innovative, to change my perspective, to see this thing a little differently than everyone else because everyone else is retreating or quitting. But winners stay there. Not because they like pain and discomfort, but they understand that here's an opportunity for me to distance myself, to differentiate myself from everyone else who's hightailing it out of here. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, everyone else is crying and whining and complaining about the new laws, the new rules, the new policies, all the paperwork I have to fill out, how tough this job is, oh my God, they, they left me at the altar, blah, blah, blah. Winners figure out, okay, how can I get better? What can I do differently? I'm not running, retreating, hiding, complaining. It's, this is an opportunity in disguise.